I can hear you. I'll just try. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Oh, it's seven o'clock. <laughs> it's it's like close to the time when the kid next door starts making noise. Oh, really? Yeah. It, like, um, why seven o'clock? Is it because that's when uh, the cartoons come on or something? I don't know. I have no idea, but it drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is at seven, like quiet all day. And then, you know, like a vampire awakens from the slumber. It's definitely a lot more running. Yeah. Uh, there is some noise throughout the day, but. And it's above you or uh, beside you? It's beside me. Beside you. Okay. Yeah. Because that I've always had that nightmare i've luckily never lived somewhere where someone above me had kids mm. and but i've been like i've like dated people who have like lived in that situation and then like you wake up in the morning to like just little feet little feet running around and uh it sucks because you can't yeah, get it's really bad makes me not want to live in a, a building anymore <laughs> But I feel like 7, I'd rather have it at 7 p.m. than at like 6 a.m. every single day. Well, but then if you're doing something like this that you have to right. do at around this time. And see, it's not 7 p.m., so it's unpredictable. But it's <laughs> it's around the same time. The I think evening. it might be when somebody comes home or something like that, and then it's like... Right. Do you think the know. kids, if we had to just imagine, do you think the kids are just home alone? Or like uh, just like stuck somewhere in their room? And then... When the parents come, they're just like, oh, you can come out now. And they're like, yay. No, I wish. it The way it, it is is because the they're just as bad, the people who look after them, because, like, the baby will be crying. And then right. the at least the mother will, like, sometimes she's done this where she matches the baby and, right. like, cries with, the, like, makes the same noise as the baby. What? Why? I don't know. It drives, it's the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> Is it like mocking the the baby for crying? Like, oh, I can do this too. Yeah, I think mocking it into saying like, oh, it's okay, you know. But, oh, I see. Uh, it's very annoying. Yeah, what parent book is that in? Must be an audio book. <laughs> Must be an audio book. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, that. it is weird because then you become like a pseudo uh, like parent just by living right next to him and you're just like well i wouldn't be doing that with my kid right For i wouldn't anything. be ha i wouldn't be having a kid it's, that's <laughs> what it, it taught me it's like, i don't want a kid kids, yeah because that would just be way. in your apartment and not just like next door well because if you look at it like if i you know put myself aside and look at it it'd be like yeah right. it's a child it's supposed <laughs> to do that but also yeah. it's like what do you have to cry about <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, to be fair, to hear the other side of this, Mark, I feel like kids cry when they when they can't express themselves, you know, in a certain way that they're, they're not being understood or something like that. It's just like a, it's very a black and white, you know, they're either like crying or happy. Mm -hmm. At least, I don't, you know, I'm assuming the kids next door are pretty young, but if that's like a couple of teenagers and that's just like what they're doing. Well, don't even get me started on teenagers. <laughs> yeah, playing their, uh, playing their, uh, the Cure on loop, you know. Yeah, and, their uh, rock and roll. When I was a kid, rock and roll sounded different. Yeah, it sounded like a what up, dude up, zip, uh, sweet bamboo, yeah. tutti frutti. We sang yeah. about holding hands, not wet ass pussy. <laughs> And somebody asked me about that. They're like, what do you think? Have you seen the music video? And then have you listened to the song? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's weird because I think it happens in every generation. But I feel like that song is particularly like relevant with like a generation, maybe 10, 15 years younger than us who are like, this is maybe their first instance of like, whoa, you know? Whereas, yeah, I mean, like, we had my neck, my back. Exactly. We had, we had little Kim. I yeah, mean, we, we this could isn't even new. No, we you could even go back to like two live crew who are like oh sure yeah or Ying Yang twins or like, two live Jews. The, oh, I don't the know parody. 
<laughs> is that the Weird Al uh, cover? No, <laughs> no, it's it's these two Jewish gentlemen who are a parody of Two Live Crew. Two Live Crew, interesting. And they just they rap as old Jewish men. That's that's great. It's like an yeah, old hello. Yeah, there's no reason for... to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like yeah, every every generation has their like, whoa, can you believe this? Can you because not only do they have the like that kind of revelation and then there's always the radio edit version which is what is you know, what is her radio edit version i haven't listened to the radio edit, but i can imagine it's they had to do a lot of like interchanging words because mm-hmm. that song is just like full of you know what you'd say lewd lewd well language. she probably made a clean version and the dirty version so it's it, it's yeah. not like they edited in like some no. songs they'll edit in like different words or whatever but yeah i think i think they definitely it it seems like a song where they would it'd just be like you know what it's probably less work just cr- recording a clean version of the song also hey cardi do you have another song that we could play on the radio <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what it is is just like instead of making a clean version of this song and confusing right. everybody because like, it's not going to make sense it never makes sense when you change never. all the words to but why don't just give us a clean single Give they us one that, that we can play on the air, and then that'll <laughs> link. People will see that, and they'll be like, oh, Cardi B, I've got better check out her album. And then they can hear that other song. Right. But do you think those people who are like, I kind of, you know, I kind of nod my head along to this music, listening to the radio edit, and then do you think those people buy the clean CD or the clean album, or do they go straight to explicit? Because hmm. I feel like that's something that, like, you know, let's say parents would listen to the song and be like, oh, this is like a pretty, this is a pretty hip song. And then they listen to the explicit version and they're like, whoa, hold on, pump the brakes here. That's not what I was getting into. I was looking for more, you know, some just like good beat and like words that don't really make sense together, but, you know, they seem like they're having fun. Right. And then they hear the explicit version and they're just like, Damn, I didn't even know that that could do that. And then they're just like, you know, Google searching, they're at work. People are just like, oh my God, you're listening to this at work. And then it's a whole thing. Oh, I just, I, so I looked it up. And the radio edit. <laughs> it's uh, wet and gushy. See, so that not, feels... <laughs> not much better. It's like, it feels more explicit than just wet ass pussy yeah like wet and gushy makes it feel like so wait okay can we do so descriptive can you pull up the dirty lyrics i have the clean one and then we'll go we could go back and forth and see what the version is that's what this episode is yeah this is (laughs) we're about three weeks after the song came out we're we're doing our version of this all right um i i assume this is the Yep, this is the dirty. All right, so we start with the chorus or the intro. The intro. So do we start clean or do we start dirty? Let's start dirty. Start dirty. Yeah, you go. So it starts whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hold up. Hold up. I have hold up. Okay, you got hold up. Great. (laughs) I said certified freak seven days a week. What ass pussy make the pull out game weak? Woo. Okay. Ah. okay, so I have there there's some and then it's just stars. So I guess they just drop out the audio on that. So there's gotcha. some blank. There's no in replacement this right. for that. And then it says certified freak seven days a week, wet and gushy make that pull out pull out game weak. Woo. Ah. So, so again pull out game is still in there. Yeah, maybe they don't know what that means. <laughs> Is it, do you think, because I, part of this thing with this song and like other songs like Two Life Crew and all the, the kind of like explicit songs, all of this is kind of done as a way uh, in, in reaction to like the FCC guidelines where it's like, you can't play this, you know, if they're basically like, well, you know, if, if me and my child are sitting in the car and we're just, you know, flipping through a, uh, FM stations. And this song comes on, we don't want it to be explicit because, like, my child, right? Mm-hmm. It's the whole, like, Janet Jackson, she put her titty out. And they're like, yeah. can you believe my, I, my, my child was subjected to that? Thanks, Justin. 
Whereas most people would probably be like, all right, yeah, that happened. Yeah. Let me explain to you this. <laughs> Please. When a man and a woman perform at a Super Bowl <laughs> together. Whatever. Yeah, they, it's basically, like, I had to talk to my freaking kid about <laughs> why why Janet Jackson had a, had, had a, 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 like a, a nipple uh, sticker on. And I, I had to figure out what that was, and then I had to explain <laughs> it to my child. I had to ask my parents what it was. <laughs> So they could tell me, and then I had to tell my child. So it's weird because I feel like they do this in in music a lot, where it's like if it's not an explicit, you know, word, but it's suggestive, like make that pull pull out game weak. It's kind of like we'll almost ooh, let ah. people figure out what the yeah ooh ah try make make people figure out what that means, but because it's not explicitly saying you know when you pull your dick out of your vagina <laughs> while you're uh, about to premature ejaculate, they're just almost like, well, it could mean a lot of things, right? I don't know. I, when I first, when I heard the song for the first time and that line, uh, I, I think I said, Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> you, clutch, you clutched your pearls. I, I, I clutched my pearls and I said it out. I said, Oh dear. Out loud. Oh dear. But I, I really like the song. Okay. You, so now, yeah. The chorus, chorus, yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. You fucking with some wet ass pussy. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass pussy. Give me everything you got for this wet ass pussy. Okay, so wet ass pussy is always going to be right. wet and gushy in this. Uh, that's algebra. Uh, algebra. <laughs> and then so it's just uh, the only difference is yeah, you dealing with some wet and gushy. So so they don't even have the break. Uh, bring a bucket and a mop. No, it does. It, oh, it does. That's, yeah, that's oh, all the same. Gotcha, gotcha. You want me to read? So I, I could read it in its entirety from now Please. on. Please. Okay, so let's go to verse one. Verse one. Just do Dude. like the first, uh, the first phrase, like the first four lines, I guess. Okay, yeah. Uh, beat it up, nigga. Catch a charge. Extra large, extra hard. Put this pussy right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. I'm glad you got the dirty first. <laughs> 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 Mark about to pull a uh, a Robert Jr. Can I say this? Is am I allowed <laughs> to say this? Can I say this? Okay, I got beat it up, baby. Catch and change, extra large and extra hard. Put this cookie right on your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. <laughs> so a little harder to rhyme. I feel like much harder to rhyme. Um, beat it up, baby. Catch a so instead of charge, they have uh, catch a was it check? Did you? No, say? no, that's the same. Beat it oh, up, baby. Catch a catch charge. A charge. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. All right. Hop on top. I want to ride. Do a kegel while it's inside. Spit in my mouth. Look in my eyes. This pussy wet. Come take a dive. Okay. Hop on top. I want to ride. I do a kegel. I'm kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> look at my mouth. Look at my thighs. This water is wet. Come take a dive. It's, I mean, I, I feel, I don't know if what, um, uh, this is the radio edit. I'd, I'd love to hear what the kids bop version of this song would be. <laughs> yeah. And like what they're, what they're in, cause they couldn't obviously do wet and cushy. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, tie me up. Like I'm surprised. Let's role play. I'll wear a disguise. I want you to park that big Mac truck right in this little garage. Make it cream, make it scream out in public, make a scene. So that's pretty much the same. Okay. Um, tie me up like I'm surprised. Let's role play. I'll wear a disguise. I want you to park that big Mac truck right in this little garage. Make me dream, make me stream, which is worse. I, I don't know. Out in public, <laughs> make a scene. Stream like Netflix? Make, or, make me dream, make me a stream. Make no, it's not what make it, says. it says. Make me dream, make a stream. Make a stream. Yeah. Yeah, that's that feels more explicit than make me scream. I don't cook, I don't clean, but I'll let you I'll let me tell you how I got this ring. A A. Same. All right. Uh on to Meg, Meg's verse. 
Gobble me, gobble me, swallow me, drip, drip down the side of me. Yeah, quick, jump out for you, let inside of me. Yeah, I'll tell him where I put it. I never let, I never tell him where I'm about to be, huh? I'll run down on him for I have a nigger running on me. Pow, pow. Okay, so they, it's all the same, but they replace that word with a. Gotcha. <laughs> Talk your shit, bite your lip. Yeah, as for a car, while you ride that dick, while you ride that dick. You really ain't. Uh, maybe I just won't do the like, uh, not the ad libs, but the little add ons. Uh, okay. As for a car, while you ride that dick, you ain't really never gonna fuck him for a thing. Uh, he already made his mind up before he came. Yeah. That's um, talk your shh. That's what it says. Uh, right. Bite your lip. Ask for a car while you ride that. Ah. Ah. While you Been ride lazy. that. You really ain't never got to moi, him for a thing. He already made up his mind before he came. It was like Shakespeare over here. <laughs> it's like Shakespeare. For whence he came. For whence he came. Me thinks he made up his mind. <laughs> now get your now boots get, and your coat. Uh, yeah. For your wet ass pussy, he bu- he bought a phone just for the pictures of this wet ass pussy. Pay my tuition just to kiss me on this wet ass pussy. Now make it rain if you want to see some wet ass pussy. Yep, exactly the same except for wet and gushy. Wet and gushy. Um, damn, how long is this fucking song? Uh, there the the first three. Look, I need a hard hitter. I need a deep stroker. Need a henny drinker. Need a weed smoker. Not a Gartner snake. I need a king cobra with a hook in it. I hope to lean over. Okay. Look, I need a hard hitter. Need a deep ah. Need a henny drinker. Need a woo smoker. <laughs> Not a garter sta- snake. I need a king cobra with a hook in it. Hope it lean over. He got some money. That's where I'm headed. Pussy A wound, just like his credit. He got a beer while I'm trying to wet it. I let him taste it. Now he's diabetic. <laughs> he oh, got some money. Then that's where I'm headed. Cookie A1, just like his credit. He got a beard while I'm trying to wet it. I'm, I let him, mm, now he diabetic. <laughs> See, I feel like the, I let him taste it, now he diabetic, works with the cookie just like his oh, credit. It, it makes much more sense with the cookie. Absolutely. Because, yeah. Well, I guess, you know, you would, I guess the, the pussy A1, like his credit, would be like, oh, it's sweet. Just gives him diabetic. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to spit. I don't want to gulp. I want to gag. I want to choke. I want you to touch that little dangly thing that's swinging in the back of my throat. My head game on fire. Punani Dasani. I don't want to. Mm, I want to. Woo. <laughs> I want to. Ah. Uh, I want to. I, I guess it's sco. Skr, like that thing. Skr. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I want you to touch, touch that, huh? That swing in the back of my, my talk game is fire. Dasani, Dasani. Wow. It's going dry. It's coming out soggy. I ride that thing like the cops is behind me. I spit on this, on his mic. And now he's trying to sign me. Damn. It's going in dry. It's coming out soggy. I ride on that thing like this, like the cops behind me. The way that I spit, and now he trying to sign me. <laughs> Your Honor, I'm a freak bitch. Handcuff leashes, switch my wig, make him feel like he cheating. Put him on his knees, give him something to believe in. He never lost a fight, but I'm looking for a beating. Same. Uh, in the food chain, I'm the one that eat you. If he ate my ass, he's a bottom feeder. Big D stand for big demeanor. If I could make you bust before I even meet you. Same. It's up for... If he ate my, what was it? Uh, if he ate my ass, he's a bottom Yeah, so it ju- it, you want to guess what it, it just says? Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> if he, he ate, ate my, my ah, ah. he ate bottom. Yeah. Uh, if you if you don't hang, uh, then he can't bang. You can't hurt my feelings, but I like pain. If you fuck me and ask who is it, who is it? When I ride the dick, I'm gonna spell my name. Ah. And then if it don't hang, then he can't bang. I feel like uh, <laughs> like a stenographer reading it back in court, <laughs> like in the FCC. <laughs> and uh, if we could just have you read the last line for us, please. 
Yeah. If you don't hang, then he can't bang. You can't <laughs> hurt my feelings, but I like pain. If he ew, me ask, who is it? When I ride, yeah, I'm going to spell my name. Ah. Ah. And then the rest is, is the chorus and the outro. Okay. Uh, I feel like... Yeah. I feel like us doing that is kind of like, you remember those like uh, rap videos? I feel like Snoop Dogg did it a few times where he's like, what's crack I like him, baby, baby girl? And then like in subtitles, it's like, how are you doing, young young fellow? Where, uh, what is happening today? And it's like the the like translation of uh, mm-hmm. of what he, he's actually saying. I feel like the dirty and the radio edit is that basically. Uh, Cookie is, you know, Punani. Yeah. Dasani, Dasani. Um. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like the song. I don't know why it just became like a thing where people are just like, "Can you believe this?" Because it yeah. just feels like, especially adults, it's weird. Because I think there's like such a there's such a like strong sexual repression in the United States when it comes to like talking about sex, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like rap is always consistently. Whether it's like crass or kind of misogynistic or whatever, it's always been very blunt with. Well, do you think it's because sex. it's a female rapper? Like, because, like you said, two live crew and like there were a bunch of yeah novelty rap groups and stuff, and uh, even uh, mainstream. But you know, Jay Z has said some things that were like for sure. Oh wow, that's suggestive. <laughs> but I feel like, I mean, it, it's it's weird because it's like. Cardi and Megan Thee Stallion aren't even the first duo to do like songs like this recently. Like City Girl has been making songs like this for years, and mm-hmm. but they're not as popular, so you know their play isn't like that. Um, I think it's, I it, it, I think it it definitely has something to do with them being women talking about this and talking about something like it's not about them like having sex. It's about something very specific that happens during sex, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a it's something that feels a little bit more graphic than just like you know the 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 kind of you know normal rap sex shit that they would talk about that anybody would talk about right um but i feel like you know way before that there are definitely female rappers who would talk about this and i think it would definitely it's weird because i feel like stand-up comedy has the same thing where um women who are doing stand-up comic comedy will sometimes i like they have like they'll talk about sex or whatever and and there's this like kind of thing where it's just like this is how i can kind of like introduce myself by talking about this thing that seems very male centric or whatever Mm -hmm. especially when like the industry is kind of male dominated and and not necessarily audiences are male dominated but like people who book shows and all that so there's this kind of like kind of trying to do a certain thing that seems like what male comics would do but when when um female comics would do it 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 comes off very differently because of our prejudice of like what women should talk about and not talk about kind of thing um so i feel like somebody like cardi or megan who 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 do talk about this kind of stuff and then do it in a very explicit way and like a hit song basically um it like the the broadness of who it touches uh, is so much wider. So on like one day, Cardi is like talking to Joe Biden on like a Zoom chat, and then the next day he's dropping wet ass pussy. And I yeah. think that dichotomy sometimes really messes with people, and they're like, "Well, well we shouldn't I be think, able to talk about that." I think it's empowering. I think it's great. I like. I, I think it. it it's something. It's, it, rap. It's so weird because. Um it's it's something that is very like a part of the culture like sex and talking about sex and all that stuff especially with male rappers but female rappers too and it's empowering for sure because it's like yeah they're gonna make a ton of money and they're gonna get a lot of clout for for the song that i think probably a majority of people who don't listen to rap would be like what no i don't like that i don't Mm want to hear that um but rap music isn't just rap music it's pop music now like it is music it's not like this niche thing that is like oh if you like rap you only like this stuff it's not something you would hear on a top 40 radio or whatever this song you would clearly hear on like that because they've 
like um, traversed a line that like very few artists could do from rap. Sure. Now it there's no line to traverse. It's like, oh, if you're a big rapper, or you're just a big artist. You're, it's not even like couched as like mm-hmm. this specific lane. I would say that there's less rock bands, right? There's le- like, I couldn't think of who's a rock band. I don't know. I feel like you hear less. I, I feel yeah. like there's still rock bands, but I the the play, let's say, I feel like it's all individual artists, rappers, and singer songwriters. Yeah, that's true. That's fair because I feel like, I mean, you definitely hear their music on like uh, car commercials and like transitions out like out of a sports game into a commercial. Like basically, it's just like you know showing a highlight of a, of a replay or something like that to the, to imagine dragons or something like that. Yeah. And then it's, you know, whatever, but cause I feel like rap music, because there is an inherent explicitness sometimes in the music, it's very hard to, to just have that in a commercial or like on a broadcast of a sports show, unless it's, of course it's the radio edit of wet and gushy, mm-hmm. which they could play at like, you know, um as Water the nba sport, like a, yeah <laughs> yeah the nba they're 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 showing a a highlight of lebron james doing a dunk uh, in slow motion while wet and gushy is playing mm. yeah but normally guess. it would be like <laughs> can you take me higher can you take I me think. higher but I, yeah it's interesting cuz rock music at least when we were growing up seem to be the pervasive like music like mm-hmm. trying, what's what, what was a big band um i'm just thinking of like popular bands from like when i was in high school or junior high like cold play like oh so something that was like not something controversial yeah no something that was just like oh this is just like what people like and a lot of people like oh, it i think as foo fighters was were probably fighters. the biggest rock i would even say that they're the only rock band that i could think of now but i'm really? i might be yeah <laughs> like the only current red hot rock and peppers roll. <laughs> i mean yeah when when i was growing up yeah <laughs> i mean i guess like that it, it, that has become more of a thing too i think in the past like five to ten years of like um you know a, a blink 182 or a band that doesn't feel that old like doing those kind of like cruises where it's just like come oh, right weezer what yeah. yeah weezer and blink 182 and uh yellow well, but I card love, i love wilco wilco is a current still a current yeah. rock band they tour and they release music yeah i've never i don't think i've listened to one second of wilco Oh, I've heard okay. about them a lot. A lot of... Yeah, uh, I definitely heard people talk about them. I feel like... I mean, because I... Like, my musical tastes, like, are all over the place. I think yeah, what more... are the cassettes that you have in your car? Because you oh. have... <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a bunch of those my friend uh, Justin gave to me. Um, he was, like, at a record store, and he's like, I've found a bunch, and I just gave them to you. So... Some of them were just like things that he liked or he thought I would like. Uh, so I haven't bought a ton, but it's interesting because cassettes, the albums that would be on cassette are what you would imagine them to be. Like I have, I think I have, I have like Cheap Trick. I have like a Van, I think I might have two Van Halen cassette tapes, like Pat Boone, uh, Dwight Yoakam, uh, Tragically Hip um <laughs> the the canadian uh youtube absolutely <laughs> well so he's uh he's canadian so that's why he's just like you gotta get some tragically hip who i didn't I, really know about before yeah uh, i've never heard anybody uh, <laughs> mention the tragically <laughs> uh, yeah unless you're from canada um blues traveler which i feel like should come with every truck yeah that that's a classic cassette to have and and I would say Blues Traveler and um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, those two cassette tapes, like, it, there are very few things that fit in a truck like those two albums or those two mm-hmm. artists. And, and like, I'm definitely a believer of, like, music sounds better in your car than it does, like, at home on a stereo or in headphones or whatever. I, I, think, I it, think so, yeah. I think, like, listening to music in your car is, like, the best. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but there's something about Stevie Ray Vaughan and Blues Traveler where you can just, and my truck doesn't have air conditioning, so you just <laughs> rolling the windows down, letting the air blow through my, you know, balding head and <laughs> listening to that, to that guy uh, blow on, a, on, on his uh, mouth horn. And it's amazing. Wait, what do you think Stevie Ray Vaughan plays? No, 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 Blues Traveler. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan plays. <laughs> He's one of the greatest guitarists of all time. You know how he plays guitar, right? It's with his mouth. I know Jimi Hendrix did it first, but he perfected it. His mouth horn, you know, just yes. Lick, Blues lick travel. Yeah, string. the guy had the the belt of uh, the bandolier, harmonicas. the yeah. bandolier of harmonicas. I, I think my, my uh, father has one of those. My father used to play harmonica, and I really? he has one of those. Yeah, it keeps all the different keys of harmonica. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta find something real quick. Um, yeah, because I feel like um, so Blues Traveler. I actually I have some cassettes I brought in from my car because they, you know, obviously it was like too full in my truck. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna name some of the ones that I have here at my desk. Okay. Uh, like, I have uh, Heartland Music presents Stage Door Canteen, which I don't know what that is. I think yeah. it's just like. Um, music that like World War II veterans would listen to as they're dancing, like in a uh, in a hall or something like that. Uh, uh, Roseanne Cash hits, just hits from 1979, 1989. Uh, ooh, yeah, nice and smooth, blazing, blazing hot. Uh, four. So it's it's like a a mix of people. Mm -hmm. That's good, blazing hot, and then sticks the Grand Illusion. Oh. Yeah, I know sticks. What is that? Come sail away. Is that on there? Yeah, Grand Illusion, fooling yourself. Um, superstars, come sail away. Miss America, Man in the Wilderness, Castle Walls, the grand finale. I, I mean, I, again, that is another. That is another group that I feel like listening into your car. Listening in your car is great. Yeah, definitely. So wait, have you seen uh, Kingpin? I uh, don't know what that is. Oh, the bowling the movie? The movie. The bowling movie. Yeah. So no, I haven't, I haven't Blues seen. Traveler does music on the soundtrack on it. And uh, at the end, like during the credit sequence, they basically do like a uh, music video. And it's like them like dressed as uh, Amish people and they're like playing their music. But, uh, but yeah. But so your dad played har uh, <laughs> the horn. Does he still yeah, play, or is it the just? Horn. <laughs> I well, think. I mean, that's the brand, the, the right? Mouth, the mouth harp. Oh yeah, I guess so. Honer special twenty. <laughs> I got one. I I got one. Uh, I got really into Bob Dylan in uh, college, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can play like uh, like Yankee Doodle Dandy or something like that. mine here yeah let's let's do let's uh let's cl let's close out the podcast with a little <laughs> uh a little uh what would our what would our harmonica duo be like our only instrument is a harmonica <laughs> what would our name be yeah mm. uh, the, uh the mouth brothers two horn two horn crew <laughs> two horn crew <laughs> Yeah. What if we right, just did wet ass pussy to uh, on the harmonica? You know how like <laughs> you know how those dumb. I, let Wait, me. Okay. Okay. Start start playing. Uh, start like chugging on the harmonica, and I'll do I'll do the clean version of. <laughs> There's some blank in this house. There's some <laughs> blank in this. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want. To. All right. Let me vent for like two seconds. The, I. I hate when let's let's say there's a song. Uh name a popular song right now. What? Uh what's like a popular song that's like let's say it's wet ass pussy, but you know, just a song that's like a lot of people like. I hate when uh, you can find it on Spotify, but you can also find like people online just doing it. I hate it when it's just like here's this popular song, but it's like my three piece like violin orchestra doing uh, our version of that 
I yeah, hate yeah. that. And it's just like, why the fuck would I want to listen to you on a violin? Not like approximating what it sounds like. Yeah. Oh, here's the fifth version of that Ben Folds song. <laughs> just like who the and and I get it. Like sometimes I feel like certain things fit. Like if you have like a, a jazz troupe and they do some like hip hop music, it can kind of work, you know, but there's some stuff where it's just like, no, I don't want to hear your 15 piece Irish orchestra do Game of Thrones themes. Like, I don't oh, care right. about that. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrible. But if I'm going to do wet ass pussy on the harmonica. Your honor, Beautiful. I'm a freak bitch. <laughs> yeah, we can edit around all of that. Yeah, we'll just clean all that up. We'll do our own radio edit of uh, of that stuff. Do you yeah. think uh, if you had to play that song, you know, that's that's always like a fun thing people do on YouTube is like subject uh, older people to things that uh, they don't understand. And then yeah. you film them for, you know, monetization and stuff. Who is somebody who who you could play this song for where they'd just be like, I guess like what you did, they would say, oh dear. <laughs> uh, like somebody it would shock? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like probably uh, like a priest or something. <laughs> a clergyman. A clergyman. A man of God. Yeah. A person of faith just would be shooken by uh i'd walk into sunday well there's no yeah I, oh there's church no, there's church there in my church. neighborhood oh yeah that's no good yeah that's no it's no bueno that's, but uh, yeah what if you uh you know you're all dolled up you got your white your white button up uh shirt button hat. to the top you yeah. got your uh your little bow tie your hair is uh, slicked back you got your slacks on, your shoes, wingtip shoes, and you're you you're going to going to church on Sunday. And in the middle of a choir or people singing, you just hear a little wet ass pussy. I feel like people would laugh. Like there's something about the song that seems a little like kind of over the top and silly that I think would be more funnier than oh, than like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. But then again, you said oh dear, so maybe you said <laughs> <otherwise."> <laughs> That's true. Are you, you know, maybe it's just like, you just aren't I, expecting it. Yeah, I think my like, mom would probably say oh dear. Right. I think my parents would just be like, what is this? Huh? I think, you know how like... Can I <laughs> You know how like parents fake like they're confused by something, but they like understand it. But it's almost like I I don't want to deal with this right now. So they're just what like, what does pussy mean? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I feel like I have some I have some relatives who I I could play this for, and they would be they would definitely think, uh, I was possessed. Yeah, they'd be like, you know, God is not in your heart, so that's why you're playing that music. Yeah, I mean, it definitely would have. I think now, to sum up, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think now it's not as controversial as it would have been twenty yeah. years ago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just because that kind of, you could say that kind of language or that kind of like thing is just so much more pervasive and easier to access. I mean, we we both had to remember like to get the scrambled channels just to see a little a little side side boob you know yeah we had to we had to record on our vhs tape janet jackson getting her <laughs> boob showing on tv in order to get a little something yeah now and then i just like you know form into my conservative now now everybody on their phone can see wet and gushy you know that's terrible it's destroying our country that's like it's that's a good uh tom brokaw that you just did Tonight on the nightly news. Yeah. Wet and gushy. What does it mean and why does it happen? Yeah, I feel yeah. like that would be good if Tom Broca talked about what uh what as <laughs> he was just like and what? yes. The... W A P is what 
the song is called and your children are listening to it. Is that what he sounds? I'd never heard <laughs> I think you got it. I think it's pretty close. Beat it up, nigga. Catch a charge. <laughs> extra large and extra hard. Put this pussy right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Mm -hmm. More on that tonight on the nightly news. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Is that Dateline? No, that's that's nightly news. I don't know. <sighs> too hot for TV and too yeah. hot for this podcast. All right, let's get started. Let's get started. Should we get started? No, let's get. Isn't that how? 